Thank you for the Institute. Thank you for our lives. We ask that you take preeminence over all the proceedings of today. May your name be exalted. Increase us on every side. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Thank you. you may put your hands down. Thank you very much. Okay. I appreciate that, uh, Mr. Samuel. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, without taking time, permit me to straight away um, um, welcome or appreciate or um, make mention of um, by way of um, recognizing the authorities concerned in this um, our great institute, the Chartered Institute of um, Human Resource Management. All right. Um, by this, I want to make mention of um, are there are there presidents? Um, impressing of um, you know one thing about um, what we do is that when you want to do this, you want to really know that you want people to really know that they are worth noting because of the office um, they occupy, and not just because of the office they occupy, but because also of who they are. In person, all right, okay. But I just I want to appreciate um, um, uh, their president, Dr. Olufemi Samuel Omoele, um, then our dear registrar, Dr. Ereton Benga Olomo, then we have a council member, Mr. Samuel Olayinka, as well as our national project coordinator, Mrs. Tessie Christopher Ekechi. An applause for them, please. Thank you. Um, this I meant to be mentioned so that we know that we are running with um, awesome calibers of people who, that are running the institute. All right. On this note, permit me also to welcome for the uh, to have the welcome address. I'm sure on behalf of the president, um, he will be speaking on behalf of the president. And that will be the person of our dear registrar, Dr. Benga Ereton Ologo. My registrar, sir. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Gideon. Compliment of the season. We thank Almighty God that has given us the privilege and the opportunity to schedule today, and it came into fulfillment. And uh, Mr. Gideon, you are looking very good. I have not seen the Christmas rice. I don't know, happy the new year. But we thank okay. Almighty God for giving us this privilege for us to be there. And then uh, we'll go straight to the business of the day. Uh, it's going to be an average to one, uh, because uh, yesterday I was meant to address the Dr. Fellow and the fellow, but uh, because of the time schedule, we decided to skip it because already they are already 50% into the induction process uh, for the fact that uh, they have received very prominent and important lecture for yesterday that we prepared them for the tax ahead and they will go a long way to propagate the good image of the Institute. But this morning, on behalf of the president of the Institute, Dr. Femi Samo Moyeli, I, Dr. Dengereto Olobo, will be reading the welcome address on behalf of the president of the Institute. And I also represent the secretary of the council, then with profound respect to also member of the council, Mr. Samuel Lyinka Mashebino is also council member of the Chartered Institute of Human Resource Management. It is a great pleasure that I welcome every one of you today to this uh, great event where eligible members will be inducted into various categories of um, cadres in the Chartered Institute of Human Resource Management. It will be very interesting to note and to inform you that the Shattered Institute of Human Resource Management has actually obtained the proper certification from all government institutes and from all bodies that are required 
to do what it is doing today. We have also went further to send a bill to the National Assembly. But notwithstanding the bill that has been sent to the National Assembly, we have obtained all necessary permission from the Attorney General of the Federation to issue certificates, which we are issuing today. And we have also went further to register the Institute with the CAC to enable us to perform the functions that we are performing today. So it will be interesting to note and to inform you that everything we are doing today has all the elements of legitimacy in conformity and in compliance with the Complete and Allied Matter Act 2020, but we we'll call it 2004, the laws of the Federation. That's the answer. Yeah, that, we Don't shall be inducting various members into the great institute today. It is important for us to inform you that woman resource and woman being are the most important element of every organization and in the circle and in the world we belong today. And it is important for us to know that our ability to manage woman resource very well will go a long way to achieve the desired success of every organization. And that is why members that will be dotted today will be equipped with sufficient knowledge that will enable them to manage the woman resource in every area where they find themselves. The Institute is synonymous with building woman resource brand and culture. And this is more than the eye can meet. People have construed woman resource as an administrative function that hires and fires employee only, but it is not. The profession has involved from the era of being a merely one of personnel management to the one that we can refer to today as woman capital management. This form of activities that we are engaging today is to jeer, is to jeer us and to expand our frontier of knowledge in how to improve the management of human resource in the day-to-day -day running of our economic activities in every facet of life. The world today is in their need of professionals that will be able to manage the resources that is bestowed upon them and that is confident within them in order to achieve the optimal level of the resource. But what is important most is the woman resource that will put computer, the robot, into use. In other words, there is no organization that strives. There is no organization that exists. There is no organization that grows, including our dear country and society, without quality woman being. And the quality woman being goes a long way to manage the activities of woman being that could not go and manage all other activities towards the development to the desired level of objective that needs to be achieved. It is therefore sufficing to say that the demand for knowledge and the certification of professional in this field of study will help to accelerate the optimal utilization of human resource in every facet of life that we find ourselves. The fundamental knowledge that has been acquired by the doctoral fellow and the fellow, and that will also be acquired today by the quality of the curriculum of the Institute and, not, and other programs that the Institute have put in place have made our Institute a great one that set a standard that others need to meet. We need to inform members that will be inducted today that there will be seminars, workshops, and all other programs as given interval or regular interval that will be announced to members that will be inducted today that we have to take part in in order to increase and expand our frontier of knowledge in these activities of life. Ladies and gentlemen, we are privileged to be part of this memorable event that is taking place today. And I love the, the resilience and the courage of members that notwithstanding the tight schedule towards the end of the year, coupled with festivities of the period and responsibility that will be imposed on individual, we still find time we still find space 
to increase in our knowledge. It will give me the insight and the instinct that we are conforming with the holy word of God. That when we increase in knowledge, we better our life. And because he said in a particular area that my people perish because of lack of knowledge and wisdom. We have taken time today to seek knowledge, to seek wisdom, to see how we can manage the image of God. And I thank every one of us that has created our time from little or no time that is left within the short period during this festive period. So the event today we serve as an igniting apparatus to proper and efficient management of human resources in our business life, in our society, even in our home, which is the primary place we find ourselves day to day. That no, irrespective of where we work, we always retire back to our home. And we should be able to use the knowledge that will be so acquired today to also manage the activities in our home. Ladies and gentlemen, I urge you to move with us and listen to the resource person as we move into the positive aspect of this particular program. God bless every one of us. God bless the Republic of Nigeria. God bless the Shatters of Human Resource. Thank you very much, Mr. Gideon. Mr. Gideon, over to you. I'm, I'm with you, sir. Thank you very much, sir, for that brilliant, brief, um, welcome address. Thank you. That was concise and that was very deep and um, cool. Thank you very much, sir. We appreciate you for that. All right. On this note, um, I'd like to quickly make mention of a few things that will guide us in this uh, meeting today, especially as regards um, the paper presentation and maybe afterwards. Now, Number one, I want to encourage us because um, I know I said it earlier, but I've already seen one or two violators of that. Um, if you must unmute your mics, that means you have been permitted to speak. So kindly help put your mics on mute. Mute it so that sounds um, um, around you, with you there and here and there, will not disturb or distract what we are doing. Um, secondly, I always want to plead also with us that in case you have to move away from where you are presently, um, maybe, you know, for one reason or the other, you might want to use the, the loo, you want to use the gen or ladies, um, can we put off both sound, your mic, mute your mic and put off your mics, i uh, sorry, your video, because uh, it will be unfair, it will not be ideal for you to move to gens and your video is on. So kindly ensure that if you have to do that, just unmute and go ahead and do what you want to do. And um, help make sure that you are a bit away from where children are, because we know this holiday period, um, most of us might be maybe in our private um, study rooms, uh, bedrooms, or maybe your private offices. But all the same, we want to just make sure we have barest minimal noise. And that's why we play with you to put up um, to mute your mic rather while we do this, okay? And in case you're asked to speak, just unmute your mic, unmute your mic, make mention of your name, then you go ahead and follow the directives or instructions of the facilitator, okay? Um, that is all. And then um, for any reason, um, in the course of the program, you might have some questions in the course of the paper presentation, Please help note it somewhere. It's either you send it to the chat room, we'll see, or you hold on until when the facilitator asks for questions. Reason being that it's easier then because so that you won't forget what you wanted to ask questions about. So you put it aside or you send it straight to the chat room. We'll see it, we'll take note of, of it at the right time, the responses will come for them. All right. On this note, um, permit me to um, to welcome um, our facilitator for today. Um, I want to appeal to us that um, we we'll take our time to listen to uh, to what she has to present today. Um, also, sorry, I missed one. 
your phones in case you have another phone around you there, help us put it on mute so that it will not ring and distract them what we are doing. All right, on this note, permit me to welcome for the next thing that will happen, which is one of the other important thing for today. Um, that is the lecture for today, and we taken by a fellow of the Institute. I'd like to make mention of this loud and clear, that she is a fellow of this Institute of CIHRM, um, and also, importantly, she is the 10th and current president to chairman of council of Nigerian Institute of Training and Development, NITAD. I say it again with all my full chest. She is a fellow of the Institute and also um, the 10th and current president of chairman of council, Nigerian Institute of Training and Development, NITAD. Permit me to welcome Mrs. Ayuade Igbei for the next presentation. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you so much, my brother, Mr. Gideon Olubile, our registrar, Dr. Ereto, and all everybody on board this morning. It's, it's always a pleasure when I see people that are ready to learn from other people's experience and we also learn from them and i met a couple of uh, people yesterday the fellows those who decided to register for the pre-induction and the doctoral fellow i still welcome you this morning and those who are joining us this morning thank you and i wish us a happy last day of the month of the month of the year and we are moving into next year by God's grace, we all will be there together and beyond. So this morning, we are going to discuss something very important, general, not as not so specific like that of yesterday. But uh, all of us will benefit from listening and sharing knowledge. As I always say, that um, all answers are correct. All people, every one of us, we always do what we always ensure that we learn from one another and we get to understand what we are here for. So please, as we go along, um, you can break into my transmission by chatting in the chat room and also ensuring that we get things done together. So this morning, what are we going to discuss? We're going to talk about hmm, an important topic. And what is that topic? managing employee life cycle value proposition managing employee life cycle the value proposition you know as i always say and as i said yesterday for those who were with us we can't do this alone you see even from the point of view of what we've done our um, what what we started with this morning the uh, national coordinator to mr gideon to the registrar, then to me. At a point in time, the Lord will fall on someone to be able to carry on. And these are the people that will help us to achieve employees. Whether you're an employer of labor, or you're into self-employment, or you are in paid employment, at a point in time, we are either employer or employee. And how do you manage the people that help us to achieve. So good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us on the last Saturday of 2022, a memorable day for that matter. So let's look at what do we mean by managing employee life cycle, the value proposition. What value are we bringing on board? What value are those people bringing on board? I'm um, yours sincerely, Ayadia BKB. You will get to see my profile, the short question of it when you receive the slides for this uh, presentation so i won't talk much about myself but let's go straight to what we have and that is what i call let's unpack the agenda what do we have for today what are we going to talk about on the employee uh, life cycle and what values first we define um, personal management human resource management um practitioner uh, professional my bag of clothes. Sorry, Technos that bag of clothes. Pack. Technos. No, no, no. You see, you see one there. 
Oh my, Techno Spark, we don't like doing this because this program is being recorded. And for people to be hearing, switch off, switch on, and all those things, it's not right, please. Then we define personnel management, human resource management professional, then human resource management consultant. How do you navigate through all this? Then we'll also talk about the concept of employee life cycle. What is it? Why are we talking about it? Then the relationship between employee life cycle and human resource management. Human resource management. Then the connect between employee life, employee and human resource value addition for success in the workplace. Wherever we find ourselves, we need to be able to connect. Connect, that is the word. So at the end of it all, we discuss, but if there's any question, kindly put in the chat box. And if there's the need for us to call on you to unmute, please, you will do that. So the first thing that I always talk about is this. As I said yesterday, the simple truth, in life and in employment is that whether you are paid or somebody's paying you or you are paying someone, what we want is we produce results. And it's not only you that produce the results, people assist us to produce results. So what do we need to do? We need to focus our energy on our people so that will be successful. So, and when you are talking of people, people are made up of different shapes and sizes. And how do we manage these different shapes and sizes of people? So this will take us to this slide. Homo sapiens. Somebody should put in the chat box. Don't unmute. What is homo sapiens? The first person will get something from you for the end of the year. I know somebody will quickly do that. What is Homo sapien? What do you understand by Homo sapien? I'm watching, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. Nobody in the chat box. Humans, that is Samuel Osarere. Samuel, Samuel, Samuel. Others, you are coming after Samuel. Thank you, Samuel. We are on. That means we are on the right track. So Homo sapiens, those who are coming in after that. So Homo sapiens, these are human beings, these are faces. I'm not going to go through the, how many faces do you have there? Because what when we are dealing with people, we, we're relating with people, what do we have? We have perceptions, perception of different types of people. And as HR, we need to know, will our perception overrule our the way we judge the people that are working with us? So realize that people are like, what? This. Linda, I thought I saw Linda after Samuel. What is this? Put in the chat box. Put in the chat box if you know what is. Not Samuel this time. Let me quickly get who we get this. Yes, Samuel, Regina, you have said human beings, human beings. Who knows this? One, two, three. The curtains are down. Nobody. Amoeba. Thank you. Who said that? Olawale Moses. You got it. You got it. Thank you, Olawale. You got it. You and Samuel, when we see and we will be able to know what is in it for us. Thank you for that, amoeba. So human beings are like amoeba. You can't press someone down and say, you are like this. Perception affects the way we relate. And that is what we are going to talk about. Some are big, others are small. So, and that is the shape of amoeba. They turn out in different shapes and sizes. Some are versatile, colorful, and full of imagination. Human beings are this. Some suit each other. You see that we blend. This, these striped ones are fitted into the one that is blood. Then some are hard and obstinate. No matter what you do to them, they still want to keep their, take their standing some aspect. Some are soft and pliable. You manage them in whatever situations. Others are simpler. And what do they do? They don't give you issues. So as HR, we need to manage one, them one after the others. Others do not, even if they are like, what do they do? They hurt and offend each other. You see these people are dagger drawn. They are about the same, okay? But they are dagger drawn. What brought us into the workplace in the first place? To be able to deliver a result, for us to be able to manage people, to be able to get there. So humanity is made up of great variety of figures which form a pattern. Here we are different types of people, different forms of people, and we are all there in the workplace or wherever we are to be able to do something for humanity, for the workplace, wherever we find ourselves. And that is what we are. We are all in there. Fish tail, onions, whatever you want, we are all there. So how do you manage these people for us to be able to do 
well in the workplace for us to be able to get results in the workplace so how to manage a group of people or personality and what work habits so that is why we are there in the workplace and that is why chartered institutes of human resource management is also there to help us to get to where we want to be it is very important so a person's performance is dependent on your personality traits and job skills what do you bring to the table what value are you adding are you just a number no you are part of the success of the organization so and it is the hr when there are issues the first thing is go call hr when there are issues with human beings go call hr except maybe when it is safety and whatever you get the line manager that first of all say where is the safety officer where is the safety manager after which human beings like what the register lord what the registrar said he said even if we are going to use ai artificial intelligence there will be one human being either will blink will talk will touch that ai to start working so we need to train that human being that to work on the AI. So if the world is made up of AI, some people design the AI, they built it, and there'll be people like us that will touch something that will make the AI to work. So what do we need to do? We need to work on the human beings, and that is our job, human, human. Whether we call it human, we call our job as human resource, or we call human capital for whatever it is. It is what people's management. We need to manage the performance of people. So how to help employee understand their strengths and how they can be most successful in the job. Even if they don't identify their strengths, we will help them in our um, assessment to get there. We will work on their skills, whether hard or soft skill, which we are going to talk about later, to get there. Because nobody wants to be considered a failure and it is the job of HR to help this type of employees to reach their potential. Nobody wants to. That is why some people just get out. I say, if you if you don't make me comfortable here, I move to another place. They cannot add. I'm sure some of us have heard that they will not add, add my salary to yours. So that is it. So we help them assist them to get to to reach their potential. So also blend the different personalities in order to lead teams, success with people, and to be able to get there not dagger drawn and whatever. So we also manage diverse personality and put the right people on the right job. You see, one thing that HR has come to realize is that there is diversity in the workplace. Diversity calls for what? Inclusion. Diversity started in the Garden of Eden. Gender. God said he made man and he said he needs a helpmate. And that is why he made woman. And from that point, diversity and age came about. Even if it is one hour that Adam uh, used to senior if he was there before her and gender came about. So we need to know that diversity is always there. Our issue, what we need to do is we'll leverage diversity to be able to look at what we can do to include others in the scheme of things and that is why we are here as hr so we are also here not only just to look at whatever certification because some of us when we get the certificate we want you to live up to that certificate you should have the knowledge you should have add skills even if you have the knowledge add skills to whatever you have learned before or you have acquired before so that your performance will be higher than what uh, you are doing by next year, 2023. And so, oh, you have different people that knew you before. It's, oh, something, something good has happened. Okay. Something good has happened. You say, mm, I attended the program in December. I'm not a member. I'm not a fellow. I'm an associate. I'm a doctoral fellow of Chattered Institute of uh, Human Resources Management. So, People will see the difference, and that is part of the certification. Don't just get the certificate and hang it somewhere, one of those that have added. No, make it to work. Bring it, bring in yourself to add to whatever we're doing. So now let's go to definition of times. Once upon a time, time, time. It used to be personnel management. In those days, if you come in, they say, go see the personnel manager. Anything. Go see the personnel manager. But personnel management has evolved. 
stream and resource management. Personal management is now part of human resource management. Personal management in those days, and it's still, they conduct recruitment, selection, and training, and whatever's so on onboarding of employees, new employees. So the functions of human resource is the miniature, is the miniature that is, is what we get in the miniature form in, it, in personal management, but they are exempted from some other things. So what this function, the function of PM, personnel management, is now more of recruiting, hiring, compensation, benefits, and other aspects that involve a new employee. How do we get them in? They're the ones that will go all around and ensure the welfare, this and that. So that is what. So now let's move to human resource professional. As a human resource professional, you can be in the organization or you may be out as a consultant. But let's look at it from the point of view of someone, a, a human resource professional within the organization. What does he do? He provides services to operating managers. Everywhere, anywhere, there are human beings in different departments and business units. You get people. And it is the HR that ensures that an engineer is posted to the engineering department or maintenance department or wherever. So who are they? They are the advocates and business partners in organizations. So what do they do? They should know, and we should know, not they, because we are part of them, should know how to design effective training programs that will help those people who are going to manage the AI, artificial intelligence, those robots that they think will take over our lives. Mm -mm. We will design training programs on how to manage them. Even if we don't, we'll be able to supervise those who are going to design the programs. So, okay. <laughs> Saidu, Saidu, please switch off. So we need to, how to also redesign work when we're talking of re-engineering of an organization, because an organization cannot be working the, the same way that we used to work in the 70s or in the 80s. Re-engineering takes place often, and that is the essence of change, because most organizations go through change process. And this change process, we see, even those of us that are into some activities, what we were using in those days, I was once in broadcasting. And in those days, our OB van used to be like a half of a house moving. And it has to go with us to wherever we are going to do any outside broadcasting. But now, you're, you're, you don't even need the OB van anymore. Things are so... In, in, they are in minute forms that you can carry them in your camera and everything, and you do everything you're shooting at, everything outside without the OB van. You can get anything anywhere. So the world has evolved. So as HR, we should evolve and be able to ensure that we fit into technology that will assist our people to achieve results. If not, we will not be there. So we need to decide where do we have quality improvement. If you do something and your customers or your clients or your stakeholders complain, we need to look beyond what we are doing. Don't just say they will take it. The world is versatile. The world is volatile. People are ready to move to get value. So our employees must be able to bring value to the table. We also should offer them value so that they don't jet out, so that they don't jack on us, as we say in Nigeria now. We don't jack on us, they need to be there to ensure that we get things done. So that is why in the 90s or early 2000, the millennium, people were talking about what? Total quality management, total quality management. And people are still into it. ISO is something that we should continually look at and see what we can do to improve uh, the activities in the workplace. So when we're talking of hiring and firing and decisions to be made, please HL, we should be there and be free of what? Discrimination. So HR, human resource management consultant, what do they do? 
HR human resource consultant. Human resource consultants are those who we see as outside of the organization, outside of, you said a professional can be in or out, but we looked at the professional that is in. So now let's look at the HR manager who is now a consultant. What does he do? We expect that the HR people within the organization will have done the needs assessment, will have done assessment in whatever area before they bring in the consultant. So that is why we are professional in-house. We should be able to do this. However, there are some things that we realize that as a professional, as HR in-house, we need somebody with extra knowledge to come in. And that is where the consultant steps in. So as a consultant, working freelance or whatever, we need to be able to say, this is what the organization or the HR manager has identified me as a consultant, somebody brought me in, or I, not somebody brought me in. Let's look at a situation where we 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 had a bid and I won the bid, and I came in. The first thing as a consultant, HR consultant, should do, even if you are given a template of what is wrong, please do your own assessment before you jump in to start working on what they said. Ask some salient questions so we will be able to get it right. Because if you don't get it right as a consultant, next time you come. Nobody. They'll call you. They just look at the window and say, tell that man I'm not in the office because you didn't give them value for their money. Okay? So what a consultant should do is that you should leave the company with an efficient and productive HR department that will be on top of the game and be able to address specific issues and be, retain, continue to be that consultant of choice and you'll be able to resolve issues. Even when you, as a consultant, what you always say in training is that, please make sure, one, you had a percentage that at the end of this re-engineering, we'll be able to have achieved 30% or 40% reduction in wastages or whatever within a time frame. put a timeline so that, after, 30, after three months or one month or two months, 30% of whatever they complained of will have been eliminated. Then you see that you're on top of the game. So you have to do a complete overhaul of the human capital of the organization. Then you also advise them on what to do. Leave them with the template on what they will work with for a time frame and come back. Because when you are did bidding as a consultant, please give yourself the time frame Work within a specific time so that you will be seen to be the magician, magician in quotes. Advise them and they'll be able to do this within this certain period of time and you come back. Build all this, not just one, one off and you move on. You still come back as a consultant. So you should create and develop a human resource model that is specific to that organization that I had you. Because the error that most of us do as consultants is that we take uh, from Paul to uh, Peter and use it to work for matter, something like that. No, work within what was given to you and what you have been able to assess within the organization. Because we have seen situation, let's take as an example, you trained or you work, we work for um, Dangote drivers, then a blue chip company said, come, our drivers have issues. Then you now carried your, your activities from Dangote to, to a blue chip company where they, are, they have drivers that wear ties and whatever. It's not the same. This, most of Dangote drivers are truck drivers. What is applicable to them may not be applicable to that blue chip company. So we need to create something specific for the organization so that when we leave the organization workforce will be working in a high level of productivity and efficiency. Now let's quickly take a, 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 an overview of um, what HR entails. Inside of these four, there are some other things that are broken down, but we need to look at it very well. HR holistically has the salaries and wages, fees, ILR, your MPP, four P's and S. What do we mean by all this? All these acronyms, what are they? Let's quickly look at what the abbreviations are. 
The four P's and S is what HR takes care of personnel, HR takes care of policy, HR takes care of promotion, performance management, and strategy. Remember, the HR manager is part of the boardroom, the policy makers. He, he also oversees the ILR, that's industrial and labor relations. When they carry their plaster, they say, they say, they say, they say call HR. If there is any, any problem about safety or security in the workplace, say, call HR, okay? Somebody collapses and say, call HR, what is wrong with our uh, first aid unit and all those things, learning and development, which is training. We, HR will not run away from this because we are partners in progress. HR is more like a vehicle, while L&D is the mechanic. When your vehicle breaks down, you call the mechanic. When your people are not up to it, you call L&D and say, what do we do? How do we approach this? So you see, L&D and HR, we are partners in progress. So let's quickly look at before. Let me ask a question. Question time, blessing time. Experience sharing, more blessing. So what do you understand by employee value proposition? Employee, have you ever heard it? If you have heard it before, just type in the chat room, yes. And if you have, what do you understand by value proposition? We are on the go. Who is the first person on the move? <sighs> yes, yes, Abdul Rashid. So what do you understand by? employee value proposition fine yes he has now what is it employee value proposition maybe somebody is going to beat abdul rashid to it somebody will type in there and tell us what employee value proposition if you are yes has to do about what the employees are bringing to the table very good that's a smart one very good yes abai or me okay ashivaju lovely abdul rashid we are waiting for you one more where are the women in the house? Yes, visible difference. Yes, what is it to you? What do you understand by that? I didn't tell you to unmute. Type something and let's see. Visible difference. Make the okay. difference. Yes, yes, yes. Somebody is here. No, I didn't tell you to unmute. Everyone, every employee value proposition by Amy Abami Loy says, is the value of a company. Uh, the, oh no! Don't go too far. Don't go too fast. Somebody is going. I want to read this out. Is the value a, a company offers employees in return for the value they bring to the organization? Fantastic. In short, it it is the balance. The words are ah uh, ah. Uh, uh. <laughs> in short, it is the balance of the rewards and benefit that employees receive in return for their performance of a company. Very good service to improving the organization. Right, lovely. That is. Uh, I, I think this this uh, this session is over. So I will tell uh, Baba Bamiloye uh, and Samuel Orubosa Osarere and visible difference. Abdul Rashid, take over from here. I'm done. Because you know it all. It's good. Maybe we still need to add Tunde, please switch off your mic. Maybe we need to add. I won't. I won't switch off. I won't switch off because I know that. I know that uh, we uh, we are paid to deliver results. So I will not switch off. Honestly, I love this. I love a session where people just uh, we are on the same page. We are cruising together. Okay, you give me some ideas and I learn from you. Then you you learn from me. Beautiful. In short, the reward that organizations give their employees for a job well done, for their performance in the organization, is the ability of an employee, of an employee, the ability an employee has to the organization in order to achieve the said goal, yes? What a company is doing to improve an employee lovely, the values that employee come in with and value to be added to the organization, fantastic. Also, we are enjoying the presentation. <laughs> I say, tell me about value addition. <laughs> Thank you for that, Samuel. Oh, the great value employee employers give to the employees in order to make them comfortable. Fantastic. Addition to what Papa Pamiloye said before, to perform at optimal level and deliver expected results. Fantastic. So let's leave it at that. So now let's look at 
what is the employee value proposition? In a rapidly changing world, the world is volatile, the world is this, the world is that, everybody say, oh, the world is changing. You remember when we were coming, when we were going into 2000, the new millennium, the millennium, I mean, it's now 22 years, we're going to 23rd year of the millennium. In, 20, in 2000, the year 2000, when we were going to cross over in 1999, people said all our computers will stop, all our cars will stop. Everybody was afraid that the 20, year 2000 will bring so many people. Some people, people said that it was the end of the world. But thank God we are here 23 years after. We are still here to the glory of God. So in a rapidly changing world of work, Ensuring employees are armed with the latest knowledge and competency is very critical for us to stay competitive because so many organizations have gone under because one, the, the, the employees are not it. They didn't step up the game. Their employers just feel we can continue to do the, the form of work the way it was, as it was in the beginning. No, that is for those who are in the those of us who are very religious, as it was in the beginning in the workplace, is not it. You have to change, you have to evolve. So look at employee value proposition. For us to stay competitive in whatever we are doing, nothing is too small and we need to. So look at it. Like we had with the HRM, the EVP, that's employee value proposition, has four five balls around it there are some that we can get but for now let's stick to this five what are they let's imagine you are interviewing someone for a job you are, you are in personnel you are, you are in hr wherever you your personnel is part of hr and somebody now says you now you are interviewing a new entrance into the and then a new entrance into the workplace you are finished and they now ask the person oh what question do you have for us you say um let's assume that I something happens to me in the workplace, what are the compensation uh, package you have? That's employee asking a, 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 somebody uh, that wants to come on board to your organization and say, what package do you have in terms of compensation? That is the value that you are giving the employee. When I've given my service and something happens, Honestly, I was going through one of these um, you know, online um, social media, um, all this news and whatever. There's some, some, someone that, and I felt so bad. I was going to shoot the, the picture, but I forgot to add it. You know, this young guy was working with uh, one of these Asian tigers company. He lost an arm. And you know what they said? They said he was careless. They were trying to this employee compensation act. It used to be workman compensation, but employee compensation act, and they ought to have retained him. I will tell you a story about that compensation when when we are done. So when you see these these five balls surrounding the EVP benefits, when we finish, you will see in each of those balls, when you crack it, work environment, you see what it entails, recognition in a job interest agreement, alignment, and all sorts, compensation, pay level satisfaction, satisfaction with pay system. And when something happens, what do you do? Okay, so as HR, we should be on top of the game. Okay, we should be on top of the game that if anything happens, what do we do? The handbook, the whatever should be updated all the time and see what others are doing so that we will not lose Somebody says millennium bug, limited time bomb yeah, in the 20 in the year 2020. Uh, no, no, not 2020, not 2000. Yes. So what it was called millennium bug then. Thank you. So when we talk about this, we should look at it. What are others in the same industry doing that we are not doing? Why are we losing our talents? Why are you losing those that we have invested money in terms of training? You know, people don't want to train because when we train them, they say they go away. No, if you don't train them, then you have issues on your hand. So let me give you a story to quickly wrap up this slide, especially in the area of compensation. There was this organization somewhere in Ikeja. I was still in employment then. 
and my uh, my agency, federal, not my agency, federal government agency that I worked with. Then we normally go around as a young training and development officer, sharing our flyers on safety and everything. We now got to this organization, this fateful day, because that organization, they've been sending one particular man, their PM. This man also doubled as the secretary. Anytime we took our flyer there, they will send this man. Safety, this same man. This one, this same man. So somewhere along the line, we, I told one of my colleagues and I said, let's go and see this organization. Let's see whether this man is the only person working in that place. So we got there. We got to this, to the security post. It's not that I'm laughing or I'm trying to make jest of them. We got there. The first person we met at the security post was a man without the lower limb. But we, we calmed ourselves, calm down, calm down. We got there. He said, please, we want to go to the personnel manager's office. And I said, he used his thumb. I said, when you go up that way, take a left, take a right, and you see a staircase and whatever. So we thought that, oh, we would uh, be able to get to the personnel manager's office. By the time, because the organization is so large, one of these Asian companies, and we were there with our flyer on safety. We moved into the organization. As we got to the middle of the organization, we got like middle of nowhere. We looked around and I said, oh, we lost. As we were trying to figure out how to get to the PM's office, we saw one man coming and see how my fingers are. Two fingers this way. So we now said, please, excuse us, excuse us. We want to get to the PM's office. He said, eh, okay. And he, he, he wanted to point, and he, no, not he, wanted, he was pointing. And actually we saw two fingers the other three were not there. Ah, we were too scared. My colleague and myself, we said, maybe we're in the land of spirits where limbs are not complete. At the gate, lower arm gone. This one, three fingers gone, remaining two. He said, when you go like this, you go like this. Ah. We said, thank you, thank you. My colleague and myself, we looked and we said, thank you. We we're able to figure our way into the PM's office. But honestly, some years down the line, that organization went up in flames because they were not taking safety into consideration. And so many people, so many of our children are out there working in some of these Asian companies and even in some private Nigerian companies, they don't think of compensation. When it happens, they give them 50,000, 100,000 and say, go. But Employee Work Compensation Act says you should retain that person if the accident happened in your workplace. So it's very important that we should look at the work environment and see what value are we giving those people and what value are we bringing to them. So we need to train them in order to ensure that they, they work in sync with what we believe in. So let's move on and see. Remember, for us to stay in competitive business, we need to be able to work on this area, benefits, culture, career development or career advancement, the work environment and compensation. So we need to develop a strong EVP in order to ensure we bring in the right people into the organization. It is said that bringing the right people onto the boss in the right seat and doing the right thing and we'll be able to retain them for business success. So it's very important. In EVP, in short, represents everything of value that an employer provides for the employee and as well as what the employee brings to the table as his own benefit. So once upon a time, 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 when employee life cycle started, it started with 11 steps. But as we always say that things evolve, man evolved and oh, we are still evolving. So from 11 steps or processes, it went to six. They made it simpler. But if you look at that, from that 11, it starts with recruiting and it ends with separation. But now with six, what does it start? recruiting and it adds with exit. Whether you call it separation or exit is still there. So recruitment and at a point in time, you will exit the organization. And that is why we say that the office will outlive the worker. The office will outlive the worker, no matter how long you say, you see that 35 years in service or 60 years of age or 75 years of age at one point in time, even if you don't want to go, your body will say it's time to exit. We need to. So now from 11 to six, now six to four. So four, first one is what you hire. And that is recruitment. 
So all of this, we take care of interview to the point that the person is now taken into the organization and the next one will be inspire. How do you inspire? The person is already in. You now do the induction, you do the onboarding and everything, HR. All of that rests on our shoulder and you have to organize the right onboarding so that the person will know that I'm here for good. I am here to stay. Even if I'm coming with a whole load of experience, what we do in this place may be different from where I'm coming from. After inspiring, you put them onto their department or business unit and they now start functioning as a new employee in the system that is learning how to, uh, learning the ropes. Three, admire. Hire, inspire, and admire. The person is already seated and he feels that, yes, I'm putting in my best. I brought in something good of value to the organization. This is where the, the HR gets feedback from the different units. We talk about performance management and appraisal, and you'll be able to know who gets what in terms of reward. What do we do to ensure that we keep this employee motivated? We get him engaged in the in the business. We empower him and we send him for training. All this are wrapped into admire. And that is why modern um, HR bring what we call uh, 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 this employer of, employee of the week or employee of the month of the year and all those reward system that would ginger them to work well for the organization. The next one is retire, the exit. And this is where also HR comes in. Let's organize a smooth exit for that person. Anyway, the person is living aggrieved. Let's get to know why. So they'll be able to prevent others from moving out the same way that he moved out. So what do we do at this point in time? We organize the exit interview the exit interview, let them pour out whatever. If they like, let them abuse you, whatever it is, just let it be. So these four steps are very easy to remember. Hire, inspire, admire, and retire. Whether the person is retiring at age, or because of age, or because of length of service, or whatever, or midstream. Because nowadays, the millennia that are in the workplace, they look at it that the only way up is out. They came in as maybe supervisor or manager one or whatever. They see that in the next couple of years, I should be looking at uh, uh, deputy something, something, or assistant somebody, somebody. So why should I stay here for long? So they say, I should, can Jakba, then I find myself up there. Jakba not to, abroad, out of this organization. Then their mates are still there, supervisors, so they are already managers in another place. So the only way up is out. So when they are going as MY, exit interview, now as HR, I, this is where I have problem with my some of my colleagues. We tend to plan career path for people, for our employees, but we don't get to sit them down to see are you enjoying this position or what you are doing? You see, we say we draw career paths. You know, some of these people, some of the employees that we have in organizations, what do they do? Some of them are already, uh, maybe they are in admin and they've been eyeing uh, account. So this person has been going to for ICANN lessons and they're doing ATC and all those things. So. When the opportunity now arose, you advertise internal and external, you say we need accountant one. Then that poor guy in admin ad applied. He said, But you're in admin. You are planning that one day you'll be personal manager, you go like that. He said, Oh God, man, no that man, no rotten. That's why I came in admin. Uh, my eyes have always been in account. So when we are planning career path, please let the people be involved. That is why I always remember what they said about um. MKO Abiola, when he went to whether you address the United Nations or somewhere or out of the of the country, he went there and uh, started talking in proverbs. He said, "Come down to our level." He said, "You can't shave a man's hair without the man being there." And I would say also that even if the man is there, it's a proverb. I'm just break, I just broke it down. He said, "Even if the man is there, if I don't put my head to be steady, you can't give me a clean." Cut. So when you are going to plan a career path for someone, involve them. 
what do you expect from them for the first year? And after the first year, you get them there. Because it's always said that most times as HR, we should start planning retirement for our employees before they get to the age of retirement when they, they can no longer do what they used to do when they were younger. So it is very important. Let's, when we plan the career, let's get them involved. So what do companies or organizations expect from employees? And what do employees expect from the employer? So that is why we have that acronym, WIIFM. What is in it for me? It's not only what is in need for me as an employee, it's also what is in need for management. What value am I bringing to the money to, to this organization? And how do I progress if I want to make a career in this place? So HR managers, we need to be there and be able to listen and see what is expected of us. So question time. Ooh, let me quickly get this out. Question time, blessing time. Do you have any question for me? If you tap in the work, or you want to share an experience with us, please put in the chat room and let's know what your thoughts are. We are 43 on this uh, program. So question time, blessing time. Okay, if you don't have any question or any observation, let me ask you a question. What do you understand by employee burnout? Chat, 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 chat. Put in the chat room, employee burnout. Are we there? Can you see me? Yes. Yes, thank you. Somebody has put something in there. Employee burnout. Employee fatigue. Linda, thank you for that. Fantastic. Employee burnout. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes, Dr. Peter. Okay. Lumide, yes. What do you understand? I didn't say yes or no. Tell me. What do you understand? Yes, you know. Employee burnout implies overwhelming on the job. Fantastic. This is the energy. Exactly during a job, yes. When employees capacity to perform, oh, fantastic. Maxed out, yes, fantastic. Employee boredom means employees boredom, yes. All answers are correct. Okay, but one is more, uh, is the main answer. All employee, employee stress, yes. Dissatisfaction about the job, yeah. Fantastic. You pick a bit of all and we make the whole of it. It's a stage of active service to the stage of non-active, fantastic, exhausted, a drop in motivation, fantastic. When someone is exhausted and is bored, when I'm tired of a particular role, fantastic, lovely. Good, let's put it, let's hang it there. Born, born out is an employee is exhausted in the workplace, fantastic. Let's hang it there. Thank you, Basil, for that. So now let's see. Burnout may not necessarily be exhaustion. Burnout may also be that it's something that the organization is not providing, okay? So burnout is not only that I'm stressed. I could be stressed because of something, exhaustion, when employee productive cough and energy begins to down, no stife, yes. Okay, about the organization feels unfulfilled, fantastic, lovely, lovely. So burnout is a consequence that it is what everything has come to be the consequence of something is it the job so consequence of the perceived disparity demands of the job you want me to perform did you give me the resources to perform both material and emotional i come to work the next thing i say good morning you, say, you don't answer me and i just hmm, what is wrong and people say that don't mind or guy is always waking on the wrong side of the bed. Which one is the right side and the wrong side of the bed? So you need to know the perceived demands of the job and the resources you are giving the person. So this job and the resources will now cause you to go under stress. We make you to do what you don't want to do emotionally. And you need to be emotionally stable in order to get there. So an employee that so the job and the resources that an employee has available to him or her, which most times lead to stress or depression in the workplace. The person's performance will no stive, as someone rightly said, because the materials are not there. I'll give you a story. When I was in paid employment, we had a program and our office was one of those few offices that had multimedia then. So multimedia and that was when multimedia and uh, laptop were coming in and everything, everything that we needed to use. So we got a fine job. And this organization said, Mrs. Igbe, for us to give you this job, you need to uh, 
physical, emotional, anxiety. You need to, okay, we'll come back to that. We need to use the multimedia. Said no problems. We're happy that at least we had multimedia in our office. But the multimedia was domiciled in the, uh, the manager's office. What did we do? We now went to the manager. We said, sir, we got this fine job. And they said we need to use the multimedia. He said, eh, at least can you, sir, can some, that person switch off? Can you, sir, allow us to be trained on how to use the multimedia? He said, I'm busy now. When I'm out of the office, you can tell my secretary to train you. He said, okay, sir. Please, whoever is on, please switch off. Muhammad, 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 please switch off. Okay. Hey, man, Muhammad, please switch off. Okay, ma'am. Mute, mute your mic. Thank you. Okay. So we now we now went to Oga. Oga said, No, I'm in the office. I'm busy. I can't do this. Da, 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 da. When I'm out of the office, tell your tell this my secretary to train you. So we said, okay. So we're all on the lookout anytime Oga we said, Oh, we now ran to the secretary and said, Oh, Auntie Oga said you should train us on it. He said, Me, enter Oga's office when he's not there. I can't, you know. I, and the thing was lying there gathering dust. So eventually we did. We went out and we got trained and we knew how to use it. So when we wanted to go for the program, we now asked the guy, say, please, can we uh, have the multimedia to use? Or just jolly well re released to us and we used it for the program. It was it came out successful. But the funny aspect of it was that the organization that got us engaged to do that, they gave us drivers. And when we were using the multimedia, some of them thought we were showing the cinema. So when we finished, they said, thank you. With this your program, sweet, well, well. He said, eh? uh, you know, I only want to show us cinema. All other people know show us cinema. So we laughed. But for whatever it was, if we did not go out of our way, we will have been stressed. We will not, we have lost the job. We will have lost everything about that. And we will have been depressed that we went all out to get a good job. So eventually, what we're talking about is that we should not burn our candle at both ends. The resources must be there. And we should be there emotionally to ensure that we get the job done. Or else, you know, what COVID did to us, did to the world, is that COVID changed the outlook of things. COVID made us realize that mental health is very important. People are going too much stress. The stress has led to depression, and depression is now staring all of us in the face. You never can say who is going through depression. That is why, as HR, look at who are those that are exhibiting the traits of depression? Are they on edge or are they at peace? These are rocks from Plateau State. When you see these rocks, the one on edge, when you see these rocks, you will think that you can go there and push them down with one hand. No, they've been there for ages. They never fail. But those that are at peace, they sit that you know that there is nothing that you can. So as HR, we need to be able to ensure, let's identify, okay? It's an overuse of employer leading to disinterest and silent anger against the job. Yes. Linda says, this is real rock. I think you have been in just before. Yes. Some of them, because they are depressed, they look at it and they attack your job with such a venom that you will wonder that, why are you doing, they are not at peace with the environment, they are not at peace with the job, they are dissatisfied, they are ongoing, undergoing stress. So they are always on edge, always on edge. Some of them, when they know that they cannot work in your place or in the organization with such a venom, what do they do? They jet out, they just leave. Instead of being on edge, they want to be in a place where they'll be at peace. Have you ever wondered why some people, whether in spite of the fact that you pay them so highly, they go to other places where they have peace and the pay is not that, much so hr the onus rests on us as employers of labor if some of us are employers of labor here not all of us are hr but we need to use some of these things to work to get results from our people remember remember all of us need to breathe all of us whether as employer or as employee so what is our role whether as employers of labor whether you're in the private sector or you're in the public sector what is our role one, we need to attract the people that will help us to get there, the talent that will call their name to be talent. We develop them. So, but it's not enough to attract and develop. 
What do you need to do? Retention is very important. And that is the crux of the matter. You train people, you keep them there, you, you, you not keep them there, you train them and develop them for that for organization to develop. But somewhere they jet out. Do you now see why did I why did I waste my money? Why did I recommend this person for? So what do you need to do in order to retrain, to retain our talent, recognize their ability, recognize their contribution, encourage them encourage them to showcase as i said yesterday there's so much down there gone are the days when we all say that leadership is from the top to the bottom now is bottom-up approach to leadership that is the story okay before i go into to the story this is the the, the levels that we need. recognize them encourage them and reward them for whatever good they have done in the system they stay longer that is the story of one woman. I met her in the course of my job, in the journey that I, I had. This woman was the woman that introduced Village Kitchen to Mr. Biggs. You know, USC used to just be into merchandise and whatever. So they came in with uh, Mr. Biggs pastry and everything. And the woman has said, I met her in person. She said, she told them that people are fed up of pastry. Let's introduce food, mother tongue. And what do we call it? Village kitchen say, eh? No, 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 no. It's bad enough that USC is going into pastry. Now we should also go into. So, but eventually, some people in their wisdom who were forward looking said, let's give it a try. And Village Kitchen became the, the, the seller for USC then. So, talking about people down there, give them voice, let them be recognized, encouraged, and rewarded for whatever brilliant talent uh, idea they bring on board. So you'll be able to retain them is very important. It's all about readiness for the right people, for the, the right people to be on the right job and at the right time in order to achieve result. If not, you will see that you are just recycling, recycling, but you need to be able to retain talents that are adding value to the system. So HR. This the, the organization. One thing I always say is that when HR faces the employees, he's back in management. And when he's back in management, he's facing the employee. So we're at the middle belt. We are in there to ensure that we get it done and get it right. So what is the business case that we need to establish as HR, as owners of business? And how do we get people to run with our dream? to run with the vision, to ensure that we get there with the mission that we have in, 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 in front of to achieve the mission, to, have, to achieve the vision. So the first thing we should do, we should describe the talent implication, internal and external trends. What are they doing out there? Who are in this, those who are in the same business that we are in, what do they do and that we are not doing? How do we now rework the internal system? to be able to get there. Who are the people that we sit in there to ensure we get it right? So we need to describe our current situation. What are we doing? Who are the people in this? This is where strategy and all those policies in the boardroom come into play, the current state. Continue doing the way we are doing, we will survive the trend. In three, we also describe an ambitious, Envision what the future will be like. Our mates are automating. We are still there getting more people. Will it not be cheaper to automate, still retain these people and train them on the automation instead of bringing people out there? So we need to look at, so different things, strategies. That is what we call the business way. And finally, you need to list the steps that will close the gap. We, if, in change the system that will re-engineer the system this is the essence of value proposition question time question time before i go to the next chat something give me a question or a thumbs up that you have something or a thumbs up that you, we are on the journey together are we there are we there i don't want anybody to omit because it will take time for people to uh, to mute. Yeah, 
Thumbs up, Linda, Annie. Thank you. We are on the journey together. Peter, thank you. Okay, so let's quickly continue. Then we we are enjoying the session. Thank you. It's good. To, thank you, sir. Okay. Say so. Thank you. Now let's quickly look at. Oh, sorry. I've gone beyond that. Let's look at this. The human resource portfolio. What is it? You see, if, especially for those of us that are, I need explanation. Peter Principle. Okay, Peter Principle. Let me quickly stop here before, so that I answer that. Peter Principle is, a, is the issue of promoting somebody to the level of incompetence. You see, and that is very typical of us, especially in the public service. The boy is good, the boy is good, but thank God for the public service uh, procedures now. You see that you stay three years or four years in a place before you are promoted or something, but depending on your level. However, Peter principle is such that you promote somebody to the level of incompetence. Somebody is on level three and he's doing so well, okay? And he's doing so well, but he needs to up his ante in order to, in order to get there. Up his ante in the sense that it may be good that this one will give us an, an example of what we are going to talk about. But the person is good on the job, but he doesn't have the certification to back it up. And you, I will give the example. So you now promoted the person to that level where he's going to lead a team. But he will need educational qualification to be able to back up whatever he's doing. But he doesn't have it. And you have promoted him to that level. He doesn't know how to do analysis. He doesn't, he just knows how to work on this on the machines and he moves on. So that type of person, you promote him to be a manager instead of leaving him as a supervisor and telling him that, okay, we'll give you training, broad-based training, but not for higher responsibility. Unless this, this, this is done, then that is when we give you. But you're not promoting to a level and you make a fool of him because the people that is leading. They know better than he does. So Peter principle is when you now, you promote somebody to a level of incompetence and he cannot perform. You made, you've ridiculed him. So Peter Uluwa Fisoye says, in the civil service, there are so many personnel that are inactive and cannot contribute anything, but just waiting for monthly salary, what can be done to make them active? That is public service, Nigeria public service. It's, it takes a lot of a lot of paradigm shift, a lot of reorientation. To some people, 30 days make a pay. Oga sell, Oga does not sell. Salary must to complete. Half of the day, they are either going to the push file or push file. They add nothing to the system until the civil service, I don't know whether it's obtainable in other climes, but Nigeria ah, is in another couple, in another discussion for another day. Maybe when they give us opportunity to come and talk to them in the, in the civil service and whatever. But I know people have been talking, people have been talking, but what difference has it made? It falls more on their immediate line manager to overhaul the entire process. It's very difficult. Is very difficult in the public service, very, very difficult because they have the stereotype and stereotype way of doing things. It is just of recent that people will say, uh, I am directed. Everything is directed. And that means you don't have an initiative. I'm directed to write. Uh, this is no. But that's discussion for another day. Let's not go there. Let's not go there. So, let, but Peter Principle, as I've said, promoting somebody to the level of incompetence. <laughs> somebody is still throwing me questions. Please, let's quickly, after this, I won't answer any question. You know, unless Peter Principle is also involved with deadly assumption that technical skills are inexperienced without soft skills, I know. Oh, yes, we're going to get there. It doesn't work that way at Samuel. This Samuel is more than, than me. Uh -huh. So for Abayo, me, he knows that it doesn't work that way because it's public service, public service. Do you know who brought me? Do you know who I am? That is Nigeria for you. So let's quickly look at the human resource portfolio. Human resource, can we please? Ibrahim Uma, Ibrahim Uma, mute yourself. Let's look at the performance axis. You see, from low job performance 
to high job performance? How do you want to move somebody from low to high job performance? Then somebody with low potential to high potential. There are four boxes here. Dead wood is usually where we see, we. I'm not saying that there are no good people in the public service. I was in the public service, but there are more dead wood in the public service. They just come, it's routine. I'm going to work eight to four, some nine to five, but eight to four Nigeria, eight to four. They just push file and push file, push file and push file. Be you, be you on 25th December. For crying out loud, 25th December is Christmas day now. So that is what they have it in their brain, figured out what they want to do. So how do you move this person, Deadwood? to problem child that you not be able to identify his problem. Then you not move the person from problem child to work horses and you eventually make them stars. So within the 35 years, you have to move somebody from one place to the other. So, or oh, nobody comes in a star shining from all through. If not, the person gets dissatisfied and burnt out. I give the story of one of my directors general in those days. He said, when we, <laughs> one of our line managers, he, he said, we all work so hard and there is no way we'll underscore us. So he gave all of us A's that year. And the director general came one day and said, I will not sign this. He sent back all our appraisal that year. He said, if you give them all A's, that means all of them are stars. They, are, they don't have any business with us anymore. So they should be out there shining somewhere, not here. He said, so you can't give them a, so there's no room for improvement. So he sent all our appraisals back that year. So we started laughing. So he said, but my people worked hard. We achieved our target. I said, even at that, there's still room for improvement. So what we're saying is that somebody, let's, let, we'll quickly finish this with, uh, with a story. The story is about Brother Yellow and Uncle Graduate. Brother Yellow knows his job very well. He's been on the job for a long time, a good job performance. Is, let's even say he's on the high side of the of the of the axis, but but that yellow did not go to school. He joined the organization when he, he finished secondary school, so he doesn't have the potential to go to school. As far as he's concerned, he's content with what he's doing. The money is okay for him. But somewhere along the line, the organization feels that if we send Bada Yellow out to go and represent him, he may not be able to express himself very well. So we needed to bring in a graduate. So they brought in a graduate, and the graduate does not have the job performance. He's just from school and NYC and all. So he doesn't have. So he's starting from low. And Bada Yellow is supposed to take him through the run of the mill. But Bada Yellow did not. He would rather throw spanner in the wheel of progress so that uncle graduates will not get it. Okay, what do you want to do? Do you not move brother yellow to say, okay, go to evening school, HR, so that he will have, move him from low potential to high potential, then you have the opportunity to rise from being a supervisor to being a manager, okay? So this is the crux of the matter for HR. We need to look at this. How do we rework this, the system in order to move the problem child to work horses and become stars eventually. And for those of us that are in the public service, how do you move those? You push file, I push file. Be you and be you. If I can sit on somebody's table, it's not urgent. It's not urgent. So we need to work on this. Especially for those of us that are in the public sector of the economy, it's very important. But for whatever it is, we need to develop a new mindset and get there. And for us to develop a new mindset, we need to watch our people grow. HR. Whether you are HR or you are business owner, watch them grow. Because at a point in time, we are going to leave the job for the millennia. We're going to leave the job for the set of people that are coming behind us in order to see the job succeed. I will say, why is it that organizations in Nigeria, uh, some of them have not survived beyond 50 years, beyond even 50 years they tried. What happened to the Odutoila tires? What happened to Tejo Sofoms? What happened to some of these organizations? Where is the Concord newspapers? Where are these other organizations? Because we should learn to be futuristic. But remember, Guinness 1759, or 17, whatever, 17 something something, is still with us. Heineken is still there, okay? And what is wrong with us in Nigeria? Is it the HR or? or do you know the business? So watch them grow or see them go. What do we need to do? We need to train them in order to close the performance gap or skills gap and they will get there. So 
and be able to retain them for business success. And we have to do that. So what do we need to do? We need to work on the skills, skills of our people, employee value proposition in the course of inspiring them. We need to work on their skills. We need to, how do we work on the skills? We need to identify the needs of the people, of their employees. Do they need soft or hard skills? And even hard skills, they need soft skills to get there. So we need to close the gap between the employee and the performer. And what do we need to do? It is the skills training that we need to, from the current state to the future state. What do we need to close the gap, close the performance gap, skills training. Skills training will have to be soft or hard. But before you talk of hard, soft skills are necessary for all skills that you need to put in place whether essential skills, performance skills, whatever skills, you need soft skills. And what are those soft skills? They are the things that can never be replaced by automation. There are things like leadership, judgment, critical thinking, emotional management, and oh, these are soft skills, managing people. Because you manage the people, they'll be able to manage the business. You manage the people, they'll be able to manage the hard skills. So in the face of fast and furious change, soft skills help professionals do what? Work smarter. Question time, blessing time. Let me see what somebody has. Somebody, Some people have typed something. We are the strategies that can be adopted. What are, okay, sorry. This is exactly what you face in the public service. Thank you. Somebody said, let's see. Oh, it's a long story. The civil service has lost that sense of patriotism, competency. You won't really blame them. Favoritism, poor motivation on the part of the government makes the civil service a mockery thing. This is exactly what we face in the public service. Thank you. May okay has this to say, what are the strategies that can be adopted by an HR to assist an organization with many stakeholders, stakeholder candidates who are negative, uh, who are negative influence to other staff who have been performing well over time, even after arranging several in-house training, counseling, disciplinary measure, and whatever. You see, some of those things, uh, especially if it is one-man business, when it is one-man business, the, the, you, the, you, the, the owner of the business will have to have a rethink. Do I want this business to survive me? Or do I want it to die when I die? Because when you talk of, uh, you know who brought me? You know who did this, and that is what, do you know who I am? That these are the problems that we have in the workplace. Actually, one-man business, and when we have a lot of people, where do you put merit in employment in Nigeria? Yeah. These are uh, very pertinent questions that it has to take a lot of rework, a lot of uh, new mindset for us to get there in Nigeria. We know that we have issues, but how do we get there? Because most of the things that we do, are, would, you, would we say they are endemic? <laughs> Civil service is not a place to shine with your skill. All we have been discussing can only work in private sector. No, there are some things that we can see, say you do. There are still some things that can work in the public service. Okay, there are still some things that can work in public service. Reward system. In the organization where I worked for years, the reward system is still there. The reward system has nothing to do with the civil service procedure. All what we're talking about is not everything that is for the private sector. When we are talking about using soft skills to manage hard skills, you see use it. When you manage people, you see use it in the public sector. We are not talking of breaking the civil service procedure when it comes to uh, promotion, uh, what and upgrading and all those things that the civil service procedure but even at this is man made for law or law made for man we need to manage both man and law in order to get there as hr so we know that not all of them you not a place to shine but you can still shine if your immediate line manager they are reward system reward system that you get because each if you work in an agency agencies have their own uh what do you call it staff handbook that they use. There are some things that you work with. It's like having a general law and a bylaw, and you'll be able to use it. So it don't say that you cannot shine in public service. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Please don't just look at right of the civil service. You need the civil service to make the government run. We need it. So don't say you can't shine. Honestly, if you look at my, if you look at my, when you get this, this slide, look at my profile. I led the team that won 
Star Performance Award from the from the office of the of the vice president. And we got accolade when we got back home. The government, and we didn't do anything too much out of place. We did what we needed to do. And my organization then, ITF, gave us the opportunity to shine. Star Performance Award. I led the team. My DG did not go with me. My DG did not go with me, okay? Uh, there are other incentives that might not be in promotion or increase in salary, but you can be using multiple platforms that will give you better incentive than others. Thank you for that. You see, look at my, my profile when we get this. I led the team. My DJ did not go. You could as well have gone there and shine that his uh, agency got this. He said, Mr. Zigbe, go. You people were the ones that did what they wanted us to do. And I got it. Today, I'm shining with that. Even I was shining with it. And it was also part of what helped, assisted me when I became director. And I showed them, I said, see, I was such and such when we won this from the office of the, of the vice president. So please don't say that civil service is not a place where you can shine. You can't shine. As a civil servant, you can build your personal portfolio, design your own brand, and be forward looking. Thank you for that, Samuel. Or so don't think that civil service, don't let's throw it away. You can shine. So in the first of this, we need skills. So let's quickly look at the power of skills. The power of skills. Skills, whether soft or hard, we need to get there. In organization where certification and training are not giving priorities, but individual performance, what can HR professional do to push the values of certification and training in such an organization? Especially where you have managers without back, backup certification. So in civil, you need, you need what to call uh, the management support. We need to rework. And actually, if you are lucky, that your organization is unionized. If it is not unionized, you have a way. If you have an interface with management, they'll be able to listen because most organizations are for profit, apart from civil service. When they are there, they want what? They want to make profit or surplus, okay? And they don't want the organization to go under. So when you have an interface with them, they'll be able to see what others are doing. Even if they don't, I'm going to add that also where you are managers without lack of this thing. You see, there are some situations where you can't help. They will put some people above you who do not have the certification, but they have the experience. However, they will get stalled at a point in time and you overtake them. So it is that patience to stay that long for you to be able to get there because we can't have it all at once. You can't come into an organization with your PhD, your master's or whatever and overtake everybody. Yes, you may have the title, but you may not have the knowledge of how to work in that place. So we need to be patient enough to be able to get there and not that we will wait forever. If you are not satisfied, instead of going into depression or stress, please jet out. It's always advisable to jet out. So let's look at the power of skills. So. Let's look at the power of skills. Imagine skills without the S is equals to kills. Imagine it further without the SK. The organization become ills. So become ills or, or whatever. The organization becomes ill. An organization performance, sorry, performance is either killed or falls ill without skills. Yeah. You may have Henrietta, Henrietta, Mute, Henrietta. You may have the capital to jumpstart a business, all the raw materials needed, the dream and the vision, a bankable proposal without skills. All these variables may not be actualized. So you need skills, whether soft skill or hard skill, but we need it for the organization to perform well. So before we end, before we end, remember, remember what? Remember the following, that the world is in the fourth industrial revolution. Should it be or should not be, especially in Nigeria? If you look from the first industrial revolution to the fourth, and the, this is where we are, they have not talked about the fifth industrial revolution, or else if somebody knows about the fifth industrial revolution, not the 5G fourth industrial revolution, this is where we are today. The world of robotics, artificial intelligence, internet of things, digitalization and automation. Do you think we are there in Nigeria? Do you think we are there? Where are we? Robotics? Artificial intelligence, internet of things. Yes, some of them we are applicable, but the percentage of where we are on the, on the scale is what we should be looking at. What can we do in our various areas? What can we bring in as HR, as owners of business in order to make the workplace an interesting place and add value to the 
employees that we have in our workplace. So in the in the in the, the post pandemic, post twenty uh, COVID nineteen pandemic, because COVID is still with us, is the pandemic that we are trying to curtail now. The first pandemic came and changed the whole face of the of the earth. It changed. It, it locked us down. So the post pandemic era for HR, what do we do? What are we doing? What can we do? Learning and development like what we are doing now has become more virtual than physical. 80% of most activities that we are doing are on virtual learning and development training are now virtual. Safety, health, environment, and she's now require more funding. Usually when you look at uh, uh, people where, they, they are, what do you call it now, climate change, health, COVID has brought in brought into our awareness, health, uh, mental health, depression. The environment needs to be secured. Security, Boko Haram, kidnapping, or whatever. We are the world is dealing with it, not in the name that we have it in. Everything, even America, they are dealing with gun wars. Wars here and there because no, 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 gun, gun battle or something they call it. Even a nine-year-old can pick a gun and kill the parents. So everywhere, she's is very important. More funding. And people that work from home. I have some of my people in the diaspora. They got jobs without visiting the office. Are we there in Nigeria? That somebody will not step into your office, you engage the person online, and the person is delivery, and the person is any salary, and the person, you don't know the person. Please, how do we differentiate? HR policy with other departments in, in, in a standard organization. It depends on what depends on what the 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 uh, the, the organogram or the uh, the organization has in place. So because if HR policy is is clashing with other other departments' activities, then it is not right. HR should bring the policies from the boardroom that affect the welfare of the, or affect the, that affect the, uh, the running of the organization and everybody. So they are the ones to now ensure everybody has his or her own um, deliverables or the type of activity that each person would do because safety cannot be doing the work of, of, um, of security, or maybe you merge security and whatever. What you need to is a child that will streamline everybody's activity and see what should you be doing so that it will not clash with other people. So because if they do not streamline it, and they should be in agreement, they should not sit down in on the in their office and draw up whatever others are doing in the figment of their imagination. They should sit down and say, what are you doing? How do we do it? It seems as if there is a, uh, we are crossing the boundary here and what do we do? So it's a child that will sit down with other business unit managers or other departmental heads to know what, if not, you will be at crossroad. People will be doing other people's job and that will bring, uh, 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 what do you call it now, uh, clash in the workplace. So we need HR, we should be on top of the game. Wherever people are involved, we don't, it's always said, let me say that, that where to so to Ibrahim, oh, Chai, Ibrahim Kura, oh. Ibrahim Kura, you all are not be switch off your, mute yourself. Okay. Ibrahim Kuna, Ibrahim Kuna, can you please mute yourself? <laughs> <laughs> Can somebody um, Una. Can you mute Una, please? Who, who is there? Can you <laughs> mute? Chai. Yes. Sorry for that. Let me quickly see if I can mute him. Can somebody um before you mute yourself, madam, that's the best thing. What did you mute everybody and you are mute yourself?
Okay, thank you for that. Uh, host, please mute, continue to mute them and I'll unmute myself. I couldn't do that from here. Okay, so what we're saying is that HR in an organization where there are so many people are crossing boundaries and they don't know what to do, HR should sit with the business unit managers or the heads of department in order to uh, streamline what, who does what and how they do that. So what you're saying is that work from home has come to stay. Post-COVID has given us this opportunity to for people to work from home. And people now just saying that, oh, I can't work from the office. If you have to go to the office once a month, but is this workable in Nigeria? If some places, yes, in some organizations in Nigeria, yes, they work from home. They go to the office once a week to the other to meet their teams and see what they can do. Job schedules have changed. Deliverables have changed. The world has changed since COVID-19, 2020 saw a lot of that. And even now, some are still working with that. that so you need to look at it. Then performance measurement is also very important. It has changed. That is why it's in red, because performance management is based on our schedules and deliverables. So these are the emerging skills that we need to work on. That is emotional intelligence, emotional management, critical thinking, boost your creativity. We should be innovative more because the world is not waiting for us to wake up. See what happened with uh, um, FIFA. Well, what is that ball? The ball that they played this year, FIFA World Cup. World Cup. See what the Arabs did with innovation. Is we can do that. We don't have to say no. It's not within the space we find ourselves. Let's make a difference. So active learning, new mindset, and a growth mindset. So what do we need to do as HR and, and as people of that work with our employees? We need to put ourselves out there. Let's deliver. So and what do we need to do in the new normal? The new normal came after the pandemic. We No, during the pandemic, we started reorganizing ourselves. How do we get there? How do we do? So what we need to do in the new normal is what? We need to be more emotional, Early intelligent aware and we know that we need to manage our emotional intelligence agile mindset mindset that is always on the move don't just sit you can't be doing what you used to do and expect a better result you need to be on the move on the go be more customer centric or stakeholder centric so that they will know you are there for them because there is no no way you'll be doing something that will not affect your stakeholders well. So not only your customers, stakeholders will be there. Digitally enabled, anybody that is in HR that does not know how to use simple laptop because we use the phone. We use the phone. This phone, most of our Android are what? They are mini computers. Even some are even more powerful than the laptop that we use or the desktop. So we need top management buying in whatever we do in order to get there. We need to link all HR efforts in order to ensure that the strategies are in sync with what we're doing in order to get success. We lead through change. Change is constant. And as we are now, things are changing every minute. Embrace diversity. Diversity has been there. So what we need to do is be conscious of inclusion. Lead virtually. Because without technology, we will not be there and be realistic and inspire people to, to get uh, to the destination. So emotional management is very important. And if you don't manage yourself well, you will see that people will manage your emotions for you. So what do you do? Emotional management is that while we all may feel angry, emotional management is knowing what to do with the emotion of anger in order to achieve the best possible outcome. Know what to do. You can get annoyed, you can do whatever, but don't let another person manage your anger. It was you that made me to get angry. No, you got angry because you wanted to. So remember, anger is one of the, anger is, a, is one letter short of danger. So we need to be able to manage a circle of influence. Let your circle of influence get wider as HR. So that because you can control that. And that is one of the ways in which you can live emotional balance. And people will say, oh, for HR, HR has our interest that HR does this, HR does that. And for that, you'll be able to retain your talent in the workplace and they'll be there for you. Remember, in order to succeed, HR must be fully engaged and make sure you empower people in the workplace. Use 
the people's people management skill and people now becomes an acronym for professionalism, empathy, optimism, partnering, loyalty, engagement, and empowerment. Feel for others and they get to feel for the job. Care for them and they care for the job. Involve them, speak to, see others' point of view, hear them out. That is a fish model. And when you combine this with people and fish model, honestly, you get your people to deliver. You deliver whether you're in the public sector or you're in the private sector, because the rich also cry. It is what is in us that is in them. So it's very important, okay? It is what is in us that the blood that runs in us is the one that runs in them. Never mind when people say they have blue blood. So at the end of it all, remember to connect. You should connect with your people because when you connect with them, you they work and care for the job. Be kind for everyone you meet is carrying a heavy load. Be wired to connect. And what do we need to do? We need to start doing that. That should wake you up if you were sleeping or you were not there. Where should we start? What should we stop doing? What should we continue to do that will help us to get there? Okay. Where should we start? Yes. What will be easy? And what are we going to stumble over? And that is the story of the civil service. Civil yeah. service video will always be there. We have to stumble over it. We have to bring our initiative and creativity to bear and ensure that the people... Are Sorry. So at the end of it all, all what we have been saying should be backed up with action. Because if you don't back them up with action, they just be like paper tiger that cannot roar. Okay? We just see them there. Mm, they are there. Because knowing is not enough, we must apply. Apply what? Action. Willing is not enough, we must do. Do what? Back whatever we do with action. Action, and we'll get there. So the failure to do any of those things, back whatever with action, is a failure that mm, I have heard what Mrs. Ibeya had said, and I've collected my certificate from Chadha Institute of Human Resource Management. I'm done. No, you are not. Don't file this away. Always refer to it. Always remember that we have something to, we owe the humanity something to get there and we have to be there. Remember, everybody has a load. Depression is real and we have to get there together and get people to do what we want them to do. Thank you for listening. And let's now quickly discuss. Let's quickly discuss what we have been doing, uh, what we have been saying since. Thank you. So, question time, blessing time, experience sharing, more blessing. I stop sharing my slide from here and let's get, let's get talking. Now we can talk about the civil service. We can talk about the private sector. If you feel there's something we can add or be of value to you in all of this. I don't want to call anybody, but I want us to look at it. Thank you so much. We get this presentation. You get this presentation when uh, you drop your when you drop your email address with us. Thank you. Remember, we are there for you. We are there for you. I'm still sharing my slide unless you want me to do something else, but we are here for you. Okay. Question time. Uh, my brother Gideon. My brother Gideon. We are here. We may want to. Okay, Linda. Okay, thank you, Linda. I have Linda. Linda's hand is up. Linda, can we hear you? Thank I'm you. For you. Good morning, Ma. Good morning, Linda. That was an excellent uh, presentation. We really you. comment your industry. Thank you very much, Ma. <laughs> thank you. Um, mine is a comment. Um, thank you for all you have said. I've worked in a very toxic. Uh, environment uh, before, the very toxic organization where everything revolves around the boss, talks to people anyhow, you know, and uh, no form of empathy at all for uh, employees. So I think at a point, everybody was thinking, uh, everybody's attention was not on the job. Everybody was thinking, what can I get out there? Oh, you know, so people are not looking at giving their best, but we are looking for other opportunities outside. And I think almost everybody has left that place now. But I think that if uh, um, um, human resource managers 
have these all these things, all these principles in mind and work with it, they will be able to retain the best and also that can offer the best for the organization. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. We hope that uh, people will be able to realize there's a limit to, they will say there's a limit to endurance, but one of those things that we see to make the limit to go higher and not just stop at that point is uh, empathy. Empathy, especially for those folks that are working with one man business, you know, they seem to be all in all. They say, This is how I manage my business, and what can you do? Can do, we can do just as much. Okay, thank you so much, Linda, for sharing that experience with us. If you are in a toxic environment, please don't go into stress and depression. See what you can do, you see what you can do, and you'll be able to get there. Okay, okay. Okay, you will send your email to the coordinator after now. Okay, any other question? Any other question? Send your, Henrietta, yes, please. Henrietta, you have the phone. Hello, ma. Yes. Hello. Henrietta. Good, good morning, ma. <laughs> I wanted to say when I heard the man's voice, I said Henrietta is woman's voice. Good morning, <laughs> good morning ma. <laughs> Henrietta, there is so much noise coming from your end. <laughs> okay, I think it's the kids, but they are downstairs, ma. Sorry about that. Ma. There is noise coming. Um, good morning, ma. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for the lecture. Thank you. I am like, as usual, I really enjoyed the lecture. I worked with, in the banking industry. Even as I speak to you, my sister-in-law is, is in the office. She's a banker. Is it? You know, is on, it on, uh, wait, Henrietta. It's because... Of yes. the situation. You know, we are changing okay. currency. We are changing currency. And they say Saturday is part of it. So no, ma'am. No, ma'am. I'm sorry, ma'am. Sorry to okay. Okay. you know, you know, this I'm talking about job burnout now. Okay, then it's um it's it's a it's a real issue in the banking industry. Yeah. You know, um, you come in as um as um an officer and they just push you to a particular department, especially operations. And you, you've done these operations for about 10 years and you want to leave. And because they feel that you are a good hand in operations, you can't leave. You know, so there's this, there's this tiredness and stress, you know, working in a particular unit and there's no, there, there's no job satisfaction. Okay, like, like you want to go to HR, you, you know, you, 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 see an, you, 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 you write an application to move. They, they just, they just, discourage you they don't want you to move and all that then on saturdays you are the atm on sundays you are the atm no no you see everybody that should be at the atm it should be something that should be rotated there should be rotation. Ma, how many staffs do we have on ground at times in the, in the branches now you have about four staffs the the head of ops and three staffs so and you cannot leave your staffs with you cannot leave your staffs with the with the with the key that is serious. You cannot leave your you cannot leave your staff with a branch key. No, no. You cannot leave just any staff with a branch key. It has to be one of the either a branch manager or the ops that has one of the keys. So you must be on ground as an ops or, or head of cash in that branch. So you are always there. My Steiner was in the office on the 25th, that's on Christmas Day. She's gonna be there tomorrow. And it, it's a serious issue. So we don't know how to talk about it. You go to most of these branches, you see just two tellers and, you know, and they're, especially where the branches they have, where they have heavy customers as and their customer, their, their customer base is high. And, you know, and banks are not doing anything about it. And you come, except you're, you're not, you're now going out. You now want an exit, you want to go out. Nobody wants to hear you out. And they do even conduct what you call um, um, exit interview. That's yes, HR. You're dropping. Yes, you're dropping your, your, they're not asking, why are you leaving? When you're so good, why are you leaving? That's, you know, so it's, it, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a big problem in the banking industry. You see, now. One of the things that uh, at times we used to, we have to go back to the days of your, why do we go that? You know, when they don't even give you an exit interview, what do you do? You see, in those days we used to have, uh, is this suggestion box? Even if they don't give you the opportunity to express yourself where you are living, Write whatever piece you want to write and drop it in the suggestion book. That was the days of yore, you know? 
when we had suggestion boxes as you are coming in or whatever, drop it somewhere and tell them whatever you need to tell them. No love lost. You are moving anyway. So that is the thing. So, but one thing is that I wonder with so many of our young graduates out there that do not have jobs, why are they not employing? But one thing that we can also look at is that most of these activities are being automated. Most of them are being automated. But what do we do when automation has come into play? Because when you go to outside of Nigeria, okay, when you go outside of, the, of Nigeria, the people that you see at the counter, uh, maybe two or three. I don't know whether they have job burnout there, whether two or three. You go to their only, I don't know whether some other banks, I know I've seen it in GT. They didn't tell me to adv advertise. You carry your cash and you pay in. You don't need a teller. You pay and the machine is there. They say payment only, not withdrawal, not the ATM is for payment. And I've seen this outside of the of Nigeria. Okay. You go in there, you don't even see any teller. You want to pay in, you don't even enter the bank. It's outside there like the other ATM. You just go in there and pay and you collect your receipt that you have paid. So that is the essence. That is the reason why we have fewer hands in the bank. And they feel that if you know your, your, your onions, you'll be able to navigate. But for, for you to say, tell us that we are understaffed and whatever. You know, most organizations, they want to give very little for much. Okay, so that is what we, what can we do? I know that people will want to say that we can relate with Henrietta. For whatever it is, automation is coming into play. What do we do? I can relate with Henrietta is talking about his work uh, and whatever. Banking industry as well. Meanwhile, I work with a CEO that rewards extra work hours. We got as much as 10K per day for coming to work during all the day. So I think this organization can devise reward system as motivation for extra work hours. Yes. That's why I said that when we've the last, I think the last slide that we had was management should have a buy in, and this should be championed by the HR. When we go into that, but, but why I understand what uh, Enreta is talking about. Enreta is probably they are detached from the HR that is in the head office. So for you to be able to send them a message and relate with them is, is, is like swimming the, the lagoon to get them. So what do we do? We need, did you have the HR of your organization are the ones, but when they get to that level, most people always say that when they get to a particular level, they remove the ladder that they use in ascending to that top level and they don't allow, they don't allow others to get close to them. So but they need to have a new mindset, a paradigm shift, because at a point in time, things will fall out not things fall apart, things will fall out and they will not be able to manage the number of people that are there to get the job done. I understand with you and empathize with you. I know what it is. I also empathize with the people in the public sector who, who know that there are some people that are dead wood. They could have been replaced by those who would do better. But because of the civil service procedure, you can't sack anybody. There have to be processes before the person is laid off. You have to have a situation a process that people will have to be to be declared redundant before you can lay them off. So it's very important. But we will get there if you know you are stressed and there is a way out instead of getting the you know like that lady that uh, jumped into the lagoon DSS and got got promoted, got this, got that, got that, got that, and at the point in time she considered it it was over and she jumped into the lagoon. It's terrible. Depression is real. If it is what you can do, that is within your power, okay? That's why you had that circle of influence and circle of control. If there's something you can influence, please do, because you have only one life. And we always say that, like what we, what we refer to as the airplane selfishness. Help, airplane selfishness is so when the mask drops, take care of yourself before you take care of others. You need to be alive to be able to take care of other people's activities. So it's very important. Thank you for listening. And we appreciate you for your contribution here and there. So this system differs. Someone said, yes. Industry differ, yes. So does a sound and good human relationship, human relationship, most organizations weaponize and whatever. So for whatever it is, please 
you first, not first bank now, you first, because you need to be alive <laughs> for you to be able to take care of that responsibility. Thank you so much. I appreciate you and God bless us all. Okay. Thank you very much, ma'am. Asking for Peter Principal. So we have we have engaged so much on Peter Principal. Thank you and God bless us all. Hello, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yes, this is Mr. Gideon. Um, I think it's um, Dr. Babylon. Yeah, what that will mention it. Said uh, while we're talking about Peter Principal, yeah, you know, said and that caller principal is the woman related case. Of the your line is interfering. I didn't hear what Mr. Gideon said. Yes, please. And, uh, and I think the polar principle is a woman related case of the Peter principle, mm -hmm. polar principle. And um, somebody, uh, that's a uh, Omar now, the Bayer Omar said, he was asking, he said, please, how independent is HR personnel? In a standard organization, I want to believe you have explained it, and I think he has gotten that also. Um, permit me also to mention that, um, in the course of all that Madam has shared with us, it is very important that we understand the fact that it, it, this cannot be exhausted. That's just the same way what we do, our jobs are you cannot complete the cycle. That is, she said something at the beginning of the presentation that um, at this time, the leadership of the institute are there. Um, I have done something earlier. Uh, the registrar has said something earlier. That means different people have to do different things to make the institute move forward. The same way our offices, individuals have to do various things to get the results that have been expected. The same way here that we have shared with us, that we need to understand that it's not just about what you know. Sometimes it's about what happens. And one thing, Madam said that I, one of the things I picked from you, Ma, is that you don't take a lot of these things, you don't take them to heart. You use them to learn what to do in such instances. Even if you leave a company, like now, whatever that happened to your family, you can't say, I changed my family. What if you get to another family and what happened, what made you to leave your family happens there? You leave that family again and all that. So you need to make sure. That's why Madam said, write and put in the box. Put in the notice board, I saw in the um, in the um, suggestion box, or write, send a mail to the company so that they can know why you are saying you want to leave. You know why? It is important that you play a role that you can be remembered for, not only when it comes to making a mark in terms of um, um, hitting your target. Sometimes whatever you introduce is your brain work. Whatever you introduce there keeps your keep your name in check in that place for as long as that company remains. Madam Ma, you also mentioned um, 1759. Even though I don't drink beer, but I know about 1759, by virtue of what they have done. Some people have done the work, and it's still standing. The same way we are saying that in our various organizations, let's start to make start the essence of this training and induction, so that we know that what we are saying is that you should remember that there are people, my register will always mention of people, that don't forget that we are working with people they have life, they have soul, they have spirit, they have relations, they have people also, they work, they live with their home. So yeah, it's not about dampening their spirit, but it's about seeing how we can get the best of everybody. The manager that is not doing well with us today, maybe the way he too was handled. But if you go that route, you might not get the best out of him. You have to try to make sure you do your part in a way that he can learn other from this. Madam said something that things have changed before leadership from up down. But now, Madam, you said, now, mostly now from down up. Why? Because those that are, that are the ones that are looking for, we are the witnesses, they don't stop at the top. They are not really that deep to go into that again because they've paid their prices and they have moved on. So it is those that are medium, lower, that are trying to see how best to do it. Now, what have I said in summary? We have put aside what we know to learn more, to add to ourselves. We have added value to ourselves. We have added more things to ourselves to make us who um, they are expecting us to be after now. I want to play with us that it's not about certificate, it's about certificate. It's not about certificate, it's about certificate. what you know. If you call your balance, what you savvy, what you savvy, that be the issue. That, but we have to add 
Mr. Moderator, good morning, respected ones. My name is Samuel Orobosa Osarare. I'm an arbitrator and a mediator, also a peace advocate attached to the Edo State Multidor Court here in Benin City, Edo State. Thank you so much. It's a delight being here. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, Mr. Aluwale, please. Unmute yourself, sir. Mr. Aluwale, unmute yourself and speak. Thank you, sir. I'm Oluwale Sunday by name, um, working with Living Faith Church, also known as Winners Chapel International. I'm the Zuna pastor here in Port Harcourt, one of our branch here. Thank you for this opportunity of being part of this great team. Thank you. You are welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Well, no name, but I call you Mr. Visible Difference. You are wearing glasses like me, Mr. Visible Difference. Please submit yourself and introduce yourself. Thank you. Yeah, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Difference Rabbo. So my Twitter handle is Shoes Visible Difference. I work with Lee Group Holdings in Nikoi Lagos. I think the director in one of the subsidiaries. I thank you for the privilege of being among men here and the women too. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Mr. Peter Ezekiel, unmute yourself and introduce yourself, sir. Okay. Um, good morning to you all. My name is Peter Ezekiel. I work with Passion Building Solutions Limited as the director and HR as well as uh, with MEP1 as the Kaduna State Program Officer for the Global Fund Project. So, and I'm based here in Kaduna State, but shuttling around Kaduna and Zamfara State as I function. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Good to have you. Okay, I go to Mr. Abayomi. Okay, I show you. My name is um, Abayomi. Okay. I am a public relations and media head to the executive chairman of Adodota local government in Ogun State, Nigeria. Thank you. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's our road. I know that road. That's our road. Are you working on it before you leave office? Oh, of course. It's, it's been fixed. <laughs> <laughs> All 
No, you know, we are, we are, we are, we are the one on board. HR, we have to do the right thing. Thank you. Now, my doctor, <laughs> I, I, I see you smiling on that. Don't worry, I'm going to call you next. I call on my, this man, I'm sure you're happy having him with you. I call on Dr. Emmy Pamelo-Yip. Dr. Mike, Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here. My name is um, Vangelis Mike Bamiloye, the Executive Director of Mount Zion Films Productions. I'm pleased to be here. Thank you very much. Good to have you, sir. I, 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 want, you. I was thinking you just, you just introduced yourself with a drama. But it's okay. <laughs> you, are, you, are, you are not that. You are a step for induction. Because I, I have not seen you on suit. Where you Thank do you. London. Okay, um good morning everybody. Um, um it's really nice to be here and I really enjoyed the lecture today. My name is um Sisu Ivande and I'm the general manager and human resource manager for Sehem Group of Companies. It's a company in Abuja, um, based in Abuja and Lagos as well. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah, good morning, sir. Yeah, good morning, sir. Morning, good to have you, sir. Yeah, my name is Mr. Kunbasi, I'm based in Port Harcourt. I'm an administrator and a research um, analyst. A research area includes governance, politics, international relations, and security studies. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Good to have you. Mr. Olumide, Adel Toyeshe, please. Unmute yourself, sir. Good morning, distinguished in your peace. My uh, name is Rami Diari Penchiari Moro. I am the chief of this weekly team, Nigeria Codings Limited. We are into a sourcing business and we are located in Lagos. I'm happy to be in our meeting this morning and I'm mean, thank you for the opportunity. You have actually impacted so much me and our case in our operation. God bless. Thank you very much. Good to have you. Um, I call Mr. Osolo or Ulusola Idris. Yes, thanks for having me. My name is um, Mr. Osolo Ulusola Idris. I am the field manager, the managing director of uh, Platform Mega Service. I work in Abba Park, Tinkan, Lagos. I am from Adudu, the local government in Ogo State. Oh. Thank you. Thank you for having I me. I can understand. Adudu, again. Good to have you. All right. Good morning, everyone. My name is Alfred Oladapo. I'm the director of learning and organizational development for our Lead Africa Leadership Academy, which is a consortium of Harvard trained experts you now working here in Africa. I'm based in Port Harcourt. Thank you very much. You're welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Oh, so Jocelyn is a man. I didn't see your face. Sorry for that. All right. Uh, let's have Awa uh, Anikwe. Awa Anikwe, please. Hello, everyone. Good morning, distinguished inductees. Um, my name is Hawa Anikwe. I am the HR manager. Tower Alloys Industry Limited, Kitchenware Division, precisely. And um, of course, we Tawa, what we do in Tower is um, the manual. Uh, roofing and profiles as well. So it's nice to be here, seeing everybody here. Um, I'm honored to be here and part of the inductees. Thank you so much. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. Um, let's have Mr. Peter Awe. Mr. Peter Awe, please. Good, good afternoon, sir. 
My name is uh, my name is my name is Peter Awe. I'm the human, human resources manager, Beta Construction Limited, a multinational construction company with headquarters based in Lagos, Eric Moore. Thank you very much, sir. Well, welcome, sir. Welcome, sir. Welcome, sir. Welcome, sir. As you say, do please. <laughs> say, do. Hello. Okay. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Yeah. My name is Mrs. Sasana Oswan Saidu. I'm the career advisor for Nigerian Petroleum Storage Company, a subsidiary of NPC here in Abuja. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Good to have you. Thank you. I hope our members in Abuja can come for some fuel. <laughs> There's no problem. There's no scarcity in Abuja. <laughs> have you, man. Good to have you. It's our Madi Prince. Please, Mr. Madi Prince. Okay, good morning. Okay, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, all, and compliment of the season. My name is Amadi Prince, and I am the human resource manager and the admin for Zivana Service, a subsidiary of uh, LMA Petrochemicals. We manage the humans in the Indian canteen services. All right, thank you very much. Um, I call uh, Mana Dayabu. Mana Dayabu, please, can I help you? Thank you, this morning. Thank you. Welcome. I have um, Mr. iPhone. Your name is also I call you Mr. iPhone. Yes, with your finger on your screen now. Tell us your name, sir. Oh, I introduced myself a while ago. My name is Alfred Oladapo. I'm okay. the director of learning and organizational development for I Lead Africa. Okay. Okay. I'm in prison for Thank you. All right. All right. Good to see you, sir. Thank okay, you. We'll go to Olawale Moses. Olawale Moses. Good, good morning, distinguished inductees. My name is Sean B. Olawale Moses. I work intensely in Nigeria PLC as a medical detailing manager and also doubled as the, as the CEO of Rafamed Pharmacy, Sutrit Nabuja. Thank you. Okay. Um, I think, okay. Let's have Nancy Ocholi. Nancy Ocholi, please. Hello, 